This is TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. And I want to let you know that the State of the Saints podcast is brought to you by Manscaped. Over 2 million men worldwide have joined the movement for all their below the waist needs. Engineers for the last 18 months have perfected the greatest hair trimmer ever created, the Lawnmower 3.0. The third generation trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology pioneered by Manscaped. You can choose the Lawnmower 3.0 as well as other items by going to manscaped.com and you can also save 20% by using the promo code State of Saints. That's manscaped.com. Use the promo code State of Saints and save 20% on the Lawnmower 3.0 as well as other Manscaped items. That's manscaped.com. Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? It is yours truly, TJ Jones, the host of the State of the Saints podcast. Hope everybody's having a great day. Hope you're enjoying your day, man. Hope you're enjoying your Wednesday. Want to give a special shout out to everybody that's listening around the country, around the world. Thank you so much. This is the show that we talk New Orleans Saints and boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Do we have a lot to talk about here on the State of the Saints podcast? There were a lot of moves through that nation that the New Orleans Saints have made since the last time we spoke. Uh, One in particular uh, is one that shocked a lot of people, uh, especially uh, since the New Orleans Saints are, (laughs) I got to be another person to say it, in cap hell, uh, the New Orleans Saints, as of this move, was about 42 or 43 million dollars over the cap but then they decided to throw up two middle fingers to everybody (laughs) and put a franchise tag on safety marcus williams who that nation this tells me two things number one it's time to say bye-bye to trey hendrickson Uh, trey hendrickson will be a free agent there's no doubt about it he will sign with another team because i cannot see Anyway, that the New Orleans Saints bring back, that they bring back Trey Hendrickson. And number two, a lot of you were wrong, including myself, uh, that Marcus Williams uh, is a top priority for the New Orleans Saints. And, you know, Marcus Williams is one of those players where, you know, you get mixed emotions when you hear people talk about him. On one hand, you have people out there that respect that he is a ball hawk and He has some great safety skills. Uh, People acknowledge the fact that he's always ranked in the top three or top five among, uh, you know, his peers. Uh, They also uh, respect the fact that he gets better each and every year. But then you have those other people who can't seem to get 2017 out of their minds. Every time Marcus Williams name come up, you know, they think about the Minneapolis miracle. Stefan Diggs running into the end zone with 10 seconds left on the clock. And no matter what he does, I mean, you just can't get past that. Uh, You know, it seems like it's like the the whole coming to America movie. Right. You know, (laughs) no matter what they have done with this second movie is not going to trump the first movie. So we're going to judge. We're going to judge the movie based on the first movie. But it's not fair to Marcus Williams because Marcus Williams, you can say a lot of things about him. But one thing that you cannot say is that he hasn't gotten better every single year. Trey Hendrickson, love what he did last year, but that's one-year production. Marcus Williams has been a first-year starter and has backed it up ever since. Uh, You know, we we have a tendency to forget some of the dark days, especially when brighter days are 
right in front of our faces. But once upon a time, the Saints had an issue when it came to the safety position. Y'all remember when they signed Jarius Bird? Y'all remember when they signed him to that huge deal? Him coming from the Buffalo Bills, he was supposed to be the next Earl Thomas. He's supposed to play the middle of the field and be this ball hawk. I think when he got signed by the New Orleans Saints, he was coming off a nine interception season. Y'all remember that? But do y'all also remember that Jarius Bird couldn't get hurt? I mean, he couldn't stay healthy. Excuse me. He couldn't stay healthy. And we had to go out here and, and get all type of safeties from free agency. And, you know, you got guys like Pierre Warren, who was a little bit of a ball hawk himself, but that's about all he can do is catch the ball. And you had all these guys that were coming in. And there was a, man, that was a drop off in safety play before 2017 when Marcus Williams came through the door. I like Marcus Williams. I respect Marcus Williams. I think that Marcus Williams can be a really good safety. And I think the Saints didn't want history to repeat itself. A couple of years ago, Sean Payton, after a, a blowout against the Philadelphia Eagles, um, there was a play in which uh, Drew Brees threw the pass to Alvin Kamara. I mean, he threw that pass on a Philadelphia Eagles safety named Malcolm Jenkins. And, of course, Malcolm Jenkins wasn't happy about that because the game pretty much got out of hand. And he looked at the sidelines, gave uh, Sean Payton a finger. And then uh, Sean Payton went, ended up going to the press conference and said that the worst decision that he ever made was allowing Malcolm Jenkins to leave the New Orleans Saints organization. He said that was one of his worst decisions as a coach. I think that Sean Payton was looking at Marcus Williams in the same light. I think he looked at Marcus Williams and he's seen his skill set and he's seen that he was getting better and he didn't want history to repeat itself. And I'm happy that he didn't. I'm happy that the New Orleans Saints look at Marcus Williams as a top priority because he should be. And anybody in the New Orleans Saints uh, fan, you know, fan base and anybody within the organization that, that thinks otherwise is high. I mean, it's, it's just as simple as that. Uh, you know, you need to put the weed down or whatever you're smoking, whatever you're drinking. You need to put it down because the fact of the matter is Marcus Williams is important to the New Orleans Saints. This guy's gotten better. He's become a better tackler. He's put on weight and he became a little bit of an enforcer towards the end of the season. And I was one of those people. And I'm not going to just sit up here and just point to everybody and say, oh, you said this, you said that. No, I, I, I said it here on the State of the Saints podcast on several occasions that the Saints aren't going to sign Marcus Williams back. I said that. You can go back and, and look at some of the podcasts I've done. I've said this. This came out of my mouth because I didn't think that Marcus Williams was going to be a New Orleans Saint. It had a lot to do with the fact that I respected him to a point where I felt like the Saints weren't going to be able to afford him. But I did feel like, on the other hand, you know, maybe the Saints, you know, were looking in another direction. But I, I have a lot of respect for Marcus Williams. I like him. He's a you know, he's a stand up guy. You know what I'm saying? He seems like a fun guy. He seems like a guy that believes in himself. And that's what you need going forward, because if you notice, there is a change of the guard going on here with the New Orleans Saints. If Drew Brees, Thomas Morris there retires, then you have a lot of guys that don't remember that Super Bowl run for the exception of Malcolm Jenkins on his second stint. You know, I'm looking at this like Malcolm Jenkins is still relatively new because this isn't the same coaching staff that was here when he was here before. So you got a whole bunch of guys out there, you know what I'm saying, for the most part, that don't remember the success the Saints had leading to that Super Bowl. Morstead isn't isn't here anymore. And if Drew Brees retired, then that's that's the end of that chapter. You have a new changing of the guards. You have the the, the up and coming guys that are going to emerge as the leaders of this team. And, and, you know, even people like Cam Jordan as they fade out. Uh you know, people, you know, like Malcolm Jenkins who we don't know how long he's going to play. I mean, he, he seems like he's setting up life outside of football, you know, doing CNN, uh, you know, being a correspondent for them, and all these other things. So you have these young guys, you have the Ram checks, you have the Lattimore's, uh, you have the Williams, the guys that are going to lead this team to the next, you know, to the next, uh, I guess, like step to where they need to be. So I like the move by the New Orleans Saints think that it was the best move possible. And I can appreciate that these guys uh, made this decision. I, I really do, man. So not mad at it at all. But you still have a lot of people out there. You got the shock jocks in the media. 
You know, they still want to put the Saints out there. And then Cap Hell, and then Cap Hell, what are they going to do? Ah! I'm not concerned about that at all, man. We've seen this before. You know, I put on social media last night. Uh, and if you don't follow me on social media, you can follow me at State of Saints. I said this before. I, I said this today. You know, I said this. I said that anybody that grew up in a house, <laughs> you know, and they seen their mom or their dad take five dollars and turn it into a whole meal. Uh, they're not concerned about the New Orleans Saints cap, uh, cap struggle. I'm going to say that again. If you grew up in a house and your mom took about five dollars and your dad took five dollars and he and he turned that into a meal. You're not concerned about the New Orleans Saints cap issues because you already know that they can get it done. You already know they can get it done. So that's the thing, you know, so happy about it. Think that they're going to get some, uh, you know, things uh, situated. And I got a lot of I have a lot of uh, confidence in that. So, you know, uh, let's see. Let's go ahead to the comments. Thank you all so much uh, for checking out the State of the Saints podcast brought to you by Manscaped. Let's go ahead and get started, man. You know, there's a lot of people out here that think that, uh, you know, I don't know about some of the things that are going on. I understand. I got my phone right here. I know that the New Orleans Saints have released uh, Quan Alexander, and they also released uh, Emmanuel Sanders. So I already know about that, uh, you know, but, you know, I, I appreciate you all for, you know, letting me know about it. We keeping trade. We about to start trading people around. Watch. Well, we'll see. Uh, just got cut. They just cut Sanders. Okay, so they just cut Emmanuel Sanders. A little bit of a shocker. Oh, hell to the no, no, no. He shouldn't be coming back. Davenport leaving. <laughs> Hi, I still know he's important. <laughs> little wake and bake this morning from Sarah. Uh, get Boston Scott back. I don't think the Eagles going to want to get rid of him. They're crazy if they do. Wow. They just released Quine Alexander. That's not a surprise to me. You know, if you can save $13 million, of course, and I think by cutting Manny Sanders, I think you may have saved about $4 million. So cutting Sanders and Quine free up, exactly. They uh, free up $19.6 million. So that was a good move. Uh, Let Drew come back for one more year. Uh, We cutting good players. Uh, Look, check this out, man. Hell no. Just no, 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 hell, just no. Nah, man, I'm over there. I'm over there. I'm, I'm good with Drew Brees, man. Drew Brees need to go ahead and retire. People just need to realize that life goes on. You know, I, I look. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna sound real crazy saying this, and I don't care who agrees with me or not. I'm prepared to have some bad times. You know, I, I'm prepared to have some bad times. Does that mean Drew Brees retired? I, I'm, I'm just being real. Like, I, I want to see this team – I want to see this team make the transition. And I feel like in a lot of ways, Drew Brees, uh, with the lack of what he's been missing over the past few years, has been holding this team back. In order for this team to step forward, maybe they need to go through some growing pains, and I'm willing to accept that. Marcus Williams is getting better, and with Malcolm Jenkins' help. Yeah, I think that helps him out a lot. I think that instills confidence in him. Uh you know, it was at the beginning of the season when the Saints re-signed Malcolm Jenkins. That was my that was my hope for Marcus Williams, and it seemed like it's working out. Saints making moves, yeah. Uh, this too much. Let's see, we have uh, we should have kept Sanders. I think that's a bad move. Uh, depends on who they replace him with, and and depends on who they feel like can take his place. Marcus Williams has improved a lot in tackling. Yeah, that's true. A lot of lessons to learn. Who that nation don't get up tight. Giving a shout out to Idris. The weed. Thank you very much for $2 says put me down and listen. You armchair analyst. <laughs> uh, Mike says Quine will be signed back after he get healed. Well, hopefully he does. Emmanuel and Quine been released. That wasn't a surprise. That is not a surprise at all. Uh, who that all, y'all? Shout out to you, Anthony. John Doe says Jenkins and Pete restructuring deals to free up space. 
Yeah, they they uh, freed up some space, man. If I'm mistaken, with that about 14.2 or something like that, I think they freed up some space, uh, you know, for the team, which you know I can appreciate. You know, guys are making these, uh, you know, m- taking one for the team, so to speak. So I can respect that. You know, I like that. You know, I like these guys are doing whatever they have to do in order to make this team run. I ain't got no problem with that at all. Uh, you hope you're having a good day today, T- uh, TJ. Yeah, I am having a good day, man. I'm having a having a really good day, man. It's a beautiful day out in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, man. Not too hot, not too cold, and, you know, just enjoying it, man. And I'm enjoying it even more because I get opportunity to spend it with you all, man, talk about New Orleans Saints. So thank you so much. Uh, Bus Gold Gain in the house uh, says, TJ, not seeing the news today. Definitely seeing the news. Definitely aware about what's going on. Uh, just, you know, just because, you know, Marcus Williams has been a topic of conversation. I'm very much aware about what's going on with the news. Um, sometimes, you know, news may come out and I may want to just reserve it and hold on to it until, you know, I figure things out and get my thoughts across. You know, sometimes, you know, I, I don't want to, I don't, I don't want to just be a hot take host here you know i I don't want to just be there you know even though a lot of these questions they be rapid fire uh if if i see something i feel like that's worth the topic of conversation may need to talk about it a little bit longer and sometimes i don't mention it because i probably want to make a show topic out of it and, and talk about it uh you know and you know for quite some time so i i but i am aware about what's going on brandon says not really surprised by it me neither. Me neither. Not at all. Not at all. Let's, let's throw it down a tad bit. Dusty uh, says, do you think Winston is a good choice? Uh, yes, um, I really think that he's a good choice. You know, what, what scares me is the who that nation feels like, you know, that's the only choice. It, it's not. You know, he, he's not the only choice that the Saints can go to. And I just think that, you know, it's almost like, you know, Saints fans are desperate. You know, they're they're desperate to try to find somebody. You know, and and I don't think that Jameis Winston is just somebody you just have to be desperate for. I, I really feel that Jameis Winston can help the New Orleans Saints. I really feel like Jameis Winston can be the Saints quarterback for the foreseeable future if he he settles down and he becomes a student of the game. Now he can get in his own way by trying to make too many plays and trying to take everything upon his shoulders and understand that you're a quarterback and you play the most important position. It's, you know, you take it upon yourself to lead the team. I get it. I understand it. That's cool. But sometimes you have to trust the guys that are around you. This is a different situation for Jameis Winston. Jameis Winston doesn't have to be, the is all in the be all of the New Orleans Saints because you have other players around you that can make plays. And when you have other guys around you that can make plays, it makes your job much easier because you don't have to go into each and every Sunday game in game out to be the guy to carry the team. Okay. All you have to do is do your job. And if your job requires you to go the extra mile, be at that level where you can step up, if the Saints are down by a couple touchdowns late in the fourth quarter, go out there and handle your business. But if it's a game where it doesn't, you know, it just so happens you don't have to do that, then don't do it. And if he does that, he, he falls into that category, he falls into that realm, he'll, he should be just fine. But Jameis Winston isn't the Saints' only choice. They can, they can easily go in and find someone else or they can draft somebody. So – is he a good choice? I like to think so. They should trade Taysom Hill. They're paying him too much to be a gadget guy. Well, Brandon, I mean, you can make an argument there uh, about him making too much money. And I can also make an argument to say that he's not making enough money. I'm going to say that again. You can make an argument to say that, you know, he's making that money, too much money. Or you can make an argument to say that he's not making enough money. Guy plays tight end. Guy plays special team. Guy play quarterback. Guy play running back. Guy play fullback. Guy play tight end. So you're playing about all these multiple positions, you know. So 
come on, man. Like, you can say that you can get that type of production. Yeah, that's true. But can you get that production out of, you know, one person like that? Or would you have to go out there and get four different people? So think about this, right? He plays tight end. Um, what's the average salary of a tight end? Yo, <laughs> you know, if you go get a decent one, maybe four or five million dollars, maybe, right? You go out there, you get yourself a fullback. What's the average salary? Maybe one, two million dollars. You see what I'm doing here, right? You see what I'm doing here. You add all that up, $16 million may not be enough. So if you can get that all in one guy, you're actually saving money, right? It's almost like, you know, it's almost like if you, you know, buy a roll of paper towels or whatever like that, but you get a deal if you buy, buy them by the bundle. You end up saving more money in the long run. So you can look at it like he's making too much money or you can look at it like, they're actually saving money by him being able to do all the things that he can do. I like to think the latter. State of Black and Gold podcast says we got to talk shop today at some point, uh, TJ. Yeah, you know, yeah, uh, yeah, that that sounds good to me, man. Definitely, definitely do. Emmanuel Sanders just got cut. Thank y'all. Uh, Juju uh, would be an interesting pick for them. Juju Smith-Schuster probably would be too much money. Then we talking about Juju Smith-Schuster. Free agents. Don't know exactly what that means. I guess maybe you're having a conversation with somebody. Facts, I like Winston too, as long as he's focused. Can they restructure Alvin Kamara's deal? Yes, they can. They can do that if, if they need to. Russell Wilson is coming to New Orleans. They're going to make a good trade for him. Watch. Well, TJ will be on the lookout for that. But if they if they don't, then still. Kimo giving a shout out to Idris. Wow, three weeks ago, $100 million over the cap. Uh, Now we're near $31 million. Yep. That's how it goes sometimes. And now they're racing against the clock because the start of the new season, I think, is Tuesday, which is the 16th. So. Got to hurry up. He plays seven positions. Exactly. You know, I I only named a few. So you're actually saving money. Them paying Taysom Hill was good business. He a great, he's a great player, a great team player. Yeah, he is. He definitely a good team player, you know, and the guys love him. All I'm saying is you, you saving a lot of money with him. You saving a lot of money, a lot, a lot of money with this guy. gonna scroll down a little bit i mean things are coming in pretty fast here so i do apologize uh if i miss some of your your comments uh tyrese let's get juju smith a free agent he can be our number two next to mike t like i said juju smith schuster might end up uh costing quite a bit of money man even though he didn't play like it he's still considered a number one receiver so he's probably going to end up getting that type of money you know um one person, you know, I'm happy about, you know, I'm happy for, I should say, is uh, is Kenny Galladay. You know, I'm I'm glad Kenny Galladay is leaving the Detroit Lions. You know, the Saints can won't be able to afford him, um, but I hope this guy goes to a better situation because Kenny Galladay is 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 the modern day Marcus Colston to me. You know, a guy that that can put up some really good numbers, that is really talented, but nobody really talks about. Uh, but as far as Juju Smith Schuster is concerned, uh, I still think that he's probably going to get paid like a one because he's considered one. You know, so I don't think the Saints going to be able to afford him. And then another thing, folks, if we're talking about cap issues, can we stop focusing on free agency and talking about wide receivers and stuff like that? You know, like I get Emmanuel Sanders got cut, but here's the thing. I like Emmanuel Sanders a lot. I think he's a really good route runner. Yes, he can take the top off the defense, but there are some guys out there that you can get for a much cheaper price that can get you that type of production. Hell, you got a guy in your locker room right now that can give you that type of production. His name is Marquez Callaway. So I'm not a big fan of going out here in free agency and just getting a bunch of guys. I, I just, I never understood that concept. And I understand that, 
the Tampa Bay Buccaneers did it and they won a Super Bowl. But that's just so doggone rare. Like that is so freaking rare to it's not even funny. I, I just look, if you can go out here and you can draft well, you can get guys for a cheaper price. You get the right coaching staff. You coach these guys up and it can give you production. Then you're fine. I mean, I think we're forgetting about what happened in 2017. We're forgetting we're forgetting about how the Saints drafted in 2017, how they allowed their team to move forward by drafting the right guys and not so much looking into free agency and picking this guy and that guy. Because if you notice a couple years before that, when they went out there and started getting Champ Bailey and, and Jerry's Bird and people like, uh, you know, and, and Adrian Peterson and all these other guys, it, 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 it proved absolutely nothing. It helped in no way, shape or form. You know, it only made the team worse because now you have a bunch of guys in the locker room with deep pockets that, you know, that they've been a lead for a long time. It's hard for them to really focus because they, they focus on so many other things. They got egos. And, and you got all this type of stuff in the locker room. I, I am a believer in a balanced locker room. You're balanced when you got the young players that are trying to grow up in the league. You got seasoned veterans to lead these guys the right way to make sure that they get steered in the right direction. That is what I feel like is a recipe for success. Not going out here getting a whole bunch of free agents just because they're out there. You know, like anybody that get cut shouldn't come across Twitter or in the inbox talking about, should we get this guy? Because if we're talking about salary cap, if we're talking about the Saints being in cap hell, why are we sitting up here talking about getting this guy and that guy when you know these guys are going to be asking for top dollars? In a perfect world, if we're playing Madden and we turn the salary cap off, have at it. But the world that we're living in right now, where the salary cap is $182.5 million, uh, you might want to lower your expectations a tad bit. I think we all want these guys, you know, that, that we, we see out here, the J.J. Watts, the Kenny Gallaudets, the Juju Schmidt-Schusters, right? But we can't have it all, man. And that's okay, but that's what trusting your coaching staff come in. That's what, what where trusting your, your your scout team comes in. I do. I trust them. They haven't steered us wrong in the last what four years. They've been hitting them out the park. John Do, uh, John Do, thank you very much for the five dollars. Says Callaway will be good. Give him a chance. I like him better than Traquan Smith. Harris will be good too. But I can see us bringing in another receiver, too. Yeah, John Doe. Uh, yeah, I can see us bringing one in. I can see us bringing one in. But look, Traquan Schmidt did a, a really good job last season so much that I haven't heard this guy's name one time this offseason. I haven't heard anybody talk about get rid of Traquan Smith. I mean, Traquan Smith was on the lips of every member of the Who That Nation around this time last offseason now you look at Traquan Smith had probably one of his best seasons as a pro Traquan Smith does a lot of the dirty work folks some of the things that Traquan Smith does it, it, it flies under the radar and I get it right it's almost like a defensive end a defensive end if he's not getting double digit sacks we don't really pay attention to him we're not focused on a guy getting the TFLs, the tackles for loss, or the guy that's setting the edge. We can care less, right? We want a guy that's going to get to the quarterback, put him down on the ground. When we look at a wide receiver, we look at him like, man, if he ain't catching the ball, he ain't doing the job. But what about the, the wide receivers that are putting defenders on their behinds? What about the guy that's doing the dirty work and setting lanes in order for the running backs to spring off a big run? See, those type of things fly under the radar. And we don't pay attention to them, but they're just as important as a guy catching the pass. Because here's the thing. If you don't have a wide receiver that can block, your running game is going to suffer. I mean, when you're throwing those halfback tosses and, then, you know, them halfback stretch plays or them, or them jet sweeps, you 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 are counting on those wide receivers to block. And Trey Quire Smith does an excellent job. And I feel like his confidence 
uh, kind of elevated a tad bit when Mike T was out. So I do think that Traquan Smith, you'll see a much better version of him if the Saints were to get a, a quarterback that can kind of cater to his skill set. Because Traquan Smith, I think he is a decent route runner, but I don't think that he's like elite with it. You know, I, I think that some of the things that Traquan Smith can do well involves him going up the field. Because he has some speed. He, he's, he's deceptively uh, fast. I don't think a lot of people give him credit for his speed. But he's really fast. And I have a lot of respect for this kid, man, because, you know, he's a, he, he's a guy that, that puts that uh, hard hat on. He goes to work. So I respect anybody that does it like that. So shouts out to him. Uh, Callaway, not ready to be a number two. He can be a good number three. I'm not saying that he can be a number two. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that he can be a number two. But having an OTA, having a mini camp, having a training camp under your belt, having more experience, being inside of the locker room will help this guy tremendously. You know, one thing about Marquez Callaway that a lot of people aren't paying attention to is how smart he is. Like, this guy does a really good job finding the soft spots in the zone. Like normally it takes a, a, a young wide receiver to uh, at least about a year to under his belt for him to be that smart. He's a very, very smart football player. And if you are a smart football player, everything kind of falls into place because there's no limits to what you can do. He's extremely talented. So can he be a number two? I mean, only time can tell. Only time can tell. And if he, even if he's not a number two, number three ain't bad. Number three ain't bad. So, you know, if, if the Saints going to go out here and get a number two receiver, you know, I mean, we don't know. We, we don't know how the team is going to look, you know, if Drew Brees doesn't come back and there's a new quarterback. That might be beneficial to a lot of guys. You might see guys making plays that you haven't seen made as many plays. Callaway, I haven't even mentioned about him, too. Yeah, uh, I think he might be a number two. Well, only time can tell on that. Um, let's see. Oh, I already read that. Let's stroll down. The t- let's, let's stroll down. Thank you all so much. Let's go to Alfred. Alfred, thank you very much for the four ninety nine, And thank you uh, to everybody that donates to the State of the Saints podcast. Uh, you can donate by you know hitting that super chat button. Alfred says, I think the Saints are uh, getting ready to do something none of us is expecting. Well, it doesn't surprise me. If you look at it, man, the Saints always uh, tend to do something like that. You know, rather it be midseason or, you know, even in offseason. Saints always, uh, you know, have a way of doing something uh, that that shocks a lot of people. So I don't know what they're going to do. You know, as long as it is, is beneficial to the team. In 2017, the Saints got Ted Ginn Jr., a good, cheap, deep threat wide receiver and was good catching those deep routes. Uh, they'll find somebody like him in this free agency. Yeah, yeah, I, I think they will. You know, they always do. You know, they, they always do. They always find a guy like that. And I, I feel like that would help them out a lot. You know, especially having a new quarterback that can come in that can get the guy to football. Like I said, I'm not taking shots at Drew Brees. I know I keep on putting emphasis on that, but it's so important. It's so important. Now, it's, look, you don't have to play arena football. You don't have to throw the ball 50 yards every play. But you need the defense to respect your offense. And I just feel like that was something that has been lacking. Teams did not respect the Saints deep ball because – They did not respect Drew Brees' ability to push the ball down the field. When you do that, when you have a quarterback that can push the ball down the field, you have to keep the defense honest. You you have to. You know what I'm saying? Like You got to keep it honest because here's the thing. If all I got to do is play the sticks because I know nothing is going over my head, I can. there's so many different ways I can come at you. And it, it also helps that your quarterback is not mobile at all. Like he can't move around. So you got two things right there, right? You can't throw the ball, 
you know, consistently down the field and he's not going anywhere. So it plays right into my hands. But if you have a quarterback who may not be as mobile, but if you give him time, he can hurt you down the field. Then the defense is going to uh, they're going to respect what you can do. So if you bring another guy in, yeah, I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. And maybe I'm I'm way out in left field. But I was thinking about this, and maybe, like I said, I could be wrong, but I feel like I'm right. I feel like that's one of the main reasons why the Saints decided to trade Brandon Cooks. I, th- I think that they had a lot to do with the reason why they traded Brandon Cooks, because I think they saw that Drew Brees, uh, you know, was having issues getting the ball down there. Brandon Cook's skill set involved him going vertical. And they looked at him as being expendable because they felt like, man, well, maybe we'll get to this point that we're at right now. And Mike and Mike T and Michael Thomas is the most logical decision, you know, because Mike T, you know, is not a too much of a vertical threat. He could do all these, you know, short intermediate things, quick slants, or, you know, those those, you know, those out routes, you know what I'm saying? Like at the sticks. So I think that had a lot to do with it. But now you have yourself a, a quarterback that can possibly come in that can get that ball down the field the way it needs to be consistently. So. Ice cream man, 504. What's going on, man? Says cap. Uh, we don't have a quarterback. Uh, we couldn't all our good players. Can we uh, get some uh, good Saints news for a change? Um, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not discouraged, man. And, and they're not cutting all their good players. All the players that I see get cut for the most part were players that wasn't on the team, right? <laughs> I mean, who did they cut? Oh, they cut Emmanuel Sanders, who was not, you know, it was in his first year. Quan Alexander came in the beginning of the year. I mean, we've had success without either one of those guys, right? So I'm not getting discouraged, you know. I'm not. I'm not worried about that. I guess I have a lot of faith in the coaching staff. You know, I'm not I'm not looking over here and seeing what Tampa doing. I can care less. I trust this coaching staff. I still think the Saints have the best coaching staff in the South, even though Tampa won the Super Bowl. You know, I I, I would still put this Saints coaching staff up against anybody in the South. A- anybody. Uh, I, I just feel like we don't trust this coaching staff. You know, we we see these players and we're like, oh man, they leaving. But I mean this coaching staff has got put these guys for the most part in these positions for us to even miss these guys. So I, I trust the coaching staff. I'm, I, I don't know about you all, but I'm, I don't feel like the sky's fault. Kimberly says who that kid fit Gerald high. Uh, what key players have we cut at that position that can't be replaced? Exactly. Exactly. I, I, I never understood this, uh, especially at the wide receiver or any pass catching position. Anybody that the Saints put at the pass catching position, rather they sign them or they're undrafted free agent and they come in, they make plays. Have you seen it? How many how many players have you seen come in at the wide receiver position that the Saints just sign or pick up that don't make plays? I'll wait. You know why? Because those guys are going to make plays because Sean Payne is going to put those guys in positions to succeed. You know, the one thing about the New Orleans Saints is they get guys who have a certain skill set that fits what they're trying to do. So if you have a guy that you need to, you know, extend plays, right? You know, a guy that get that yak, the Saints are going to go out here and get them. If they need somebody that's, you know, third down, you need a big play you know, third and three or third and five, they they can find a, a guy to move the sticks. You know, once upon a time, we didn't know who Willie Sneed was, right? Once upon a time, we didn't know who Lance Moore was, right? Once upon a time, we didn't know who Joseph Morgan was, right? Once upon a time, we didn't know who Colston was. Uh, do, need I say more? Need I say more? We didn't know who any of these guys were. We didn't know what these guys were going to bring to the team. In some cases, some of us probably didn't never even heard of Robert Meacham. You know, even though, you know, he played in the SEC. But they found these guys with their skill sets and they made it work. You get people like Ted Ginn Jr., like somebody just mentioned. 
use them for his skill set. Oh, you know what I'm saying? Tay again, Jr. getting up there and he's oh, we got Deontay Harris. So how is he working out for us? Oh, you know, like we we get rid of Brandon Coleman, but you know what I'm saying? In comes some, you know, he was helping out in the goal line situation. He can't, you know what I'm saying? He mostly was dealing, you know, coming in when it came to the blocking. Who we got to replace him? We got Traquan Smith. Yeah, that same type of production blocking. So I, I just don't understand how people just sit up here and make it seem like the sky is fault. I, I really don't. I don't understand how people can just sit up here with a straight face and just and just believe that the Saints won't have no type of offensive firepower. Are you crazy? Are you crazy? I, I just I just fail to believe that. Is Quine gone? I thought it was uh, just being talked about. No, he, he's been cut. He's been cut. Sanders, Quan, these players are good. Who are we going to replace with them? I can find. I can find plenty. Thank you. He reminds me of Justin Jefferson. Not exactly the same, but smart like him. I guess you're talking about Marquez Callaway. I would assume. I'm not worried. We have Michael Thomas. Yep. I'll be overjoyed if we get Jabril Cox. I guess that's what you're referring to. Uh, we will pick up uh, wide receiver Curtis Samuel from the Panthers. Watch. Well, that would be a good pick. That's a, that's a nice, uh, fair, um, pretty cheap pick, you know. TJ, I'll give you a few cheap wide receivers. John Ross, thank you. Philip Dorsett, thank you. And Deshaun Jackson. And what you think, my guy? Well, look, Donald, I think that is some 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 good, really good uh, wide receivers that you pointed out there. Uh, let's go ahead and start with John Ross here. John Ross, speedy guy. I think a lot of people probably watched him at the University of Washington. Super fast, uh, ran the second fastest 40 at the combine next to uh, uh, CJ2K, uh, Chris Johnson, but always was hurt. So scratch him off the list. Uh, Philip Dorsett, I think that he's a good you know receiver. Depends on the situation. Has some success in Indianapolis. Had a little bit of success with New England, uh, but, you know, that's, that's kind of up and down. And Deshaun Jackson, I feel like his best day is up behind. You know, I think he's uh, constantly hurt. So those are some good names. Those are some cheap guys. But um, if if I was a GM, they wouldn't be my first choice. Those are some good picks, though. Not mad at them. Yes, I hope uh, they just lock him up to a contract instead of a tag. Of course, you know, Thomas – People people respect Marcus Williams, and, and there is a market for this guy. There is a market for Marcus Williams. Anybody that don't believe that there is a, mar- a market for Marcus Williams is crazy. Like, this guy is ranked among some of the best safeties in football. I'm going to say that again. He is ranked among some of the best safeties in football, despite what you may think. Because we all know that some Saint fans are emotionally invested in this team and their passion, their love is from down to down. And some people can't get that 2017 situation out of their minds. You know, they they can't, you know, but get over it. If this guy would have went into uh, the free agent market, he would have got signed the next day. You can bank on that. But. Right now, going to take a little break, and I have to tell you all about the official sponsor of the State of the Saints podcast, which is Manscaped. Now, get prepared for St. Patrick's Day with Manscaped. Now, if you're going to get a little lucky, Manscaped is the global leader for all your below-the-waist grooming needs. It is the official sponsor of the State of the Saints podcast, and to assure that you have the best tools for your family jewels, I am going to give you 20% off on your purchase with Manscaped. All you have to do is use the promo code State of Saints. Okay, that's all one word. That's State of Saints. You will get 20% off of your purchase. And, and international shipping is free. There's free international shipping. So go to manscaped.com, search, well, not search, search some of the items that they have, look at some of the products. Use the promo code State of Saints, no matter what your total is. Rather, you get something that's maybe like $6 or you get a 
you know, $100 package. All you have to do is use the promo code State of Saints and you will save 20% off. One item I recommend, and I constantly say this on the show, is the Lawnmower 3.0. Uh, is a water resistant hair trimmer and I, I, it's a really good product, man. So they have that as well as other products at manscaped.com. Use the promo code once again, State of Saints. Now let's get back into it. Had to pay the bills. Uh, I've seen many players over the years, late draft picks and undrafted picks to come in, uh, contribute real well for us. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Like I said, that's why I'm not worried. I don't understand why anybody is worried. I don't. I don't get it. Like, stop watching these sports shows, man. They, they are like these sports shows are doing their job, man. They are doing <laughs> their freaking job because. They got y'all like mob deep. They got y'all shook, 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 scared to death. Oh, TJ, I seen that, that, that they cut. Like, come on, dude. Uh, they, they cut Emmanuel Sanders. They, they, they cut Quine. They, they were structuring deals. What, what are we going to do? I trust this team, man. I trust this team. I trust the squad. I trust this coaching staff. You know, every single year we seem like we go through these same situations. Cap hell, cap hell, cap hell, then cap hell, cap hell. You know, like, shit, we got to go Vince McMahon, cap hell. You know, like, what, what the hell are we doing here? The Saints have proven over the years that they can find ways to make things work. They were about to do something that was so unconventional to get to Davion Clowney. The league had to go into a rule book, and the rule wasn't even implemented. They just they just realized that the Saints found the loophole and didn't want them to do it. So if the Saints can find a loophole like that to get to Davion Clowney by doing almost like what the basketball uh, NBA does, by going out here trading with another team to get a player. What makes y'all think that the New Orleans Saints won't be able to do these things? What, what are we doing, man? Stop watching these shows, man. These shows are designed to reel you in. Those guys do an outstanding job, no doubt about it. Straight up shock jocks, best shock jocks in the business. But at the same time, if you're using logic and if you understand the Saints and the front office and what they have done all season, after all season, after all season, you wouldn't even be worried. And once again, I say that again. And maybe it's the way that I grew up, man. You know, I understand that you can make things work. I know that you can make money stretch. I don't know if I got some, you know, some aristocrats out here, you know what I'm saying? Some old Marcus Vineyard people out there. But at the same time, I grew up and I know that you can make it stretch. Okay, so I'm not concerned about the New Orleans Saints cap situation. This team was like over a hundred million dollars in cap hell, as they say. And now this team is is, is less than what about 30, 31 million dollars in, 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 in cap hell. And they did that in probably less than two weeks. So what are we worried about here? Have some faith in your coaching staff. Have some faith in your squad. My goodness. Are y'all that afraid? Are y'all that afraid that a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan might come into your inbox and say you suck? A Falcon fan or a Carolina Panther fan? I get it, man. I get it. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers won the Super Bowl. Woo! Oh, yeah. Hooray! I get it. I get it. You want success. I understand that. But also, man, be logical here. What have the Saints done to, to, to have you this shook? For the last four years, they have had the best record in football. Making these trades and making these deals. Do you not understand that the Saints over the last couple of years have went into the offseason over the cap and they still made it work? So what are you worried about, bro? What are you worried about? Have some faith in your squad. My goodness. Have some dignity over there shaking, man. Y'all looking like Eddie Kane rolling up, you know what I'm saying, to the rest of the heartbeats. With the with the with the bedazzled uh, outfit on, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's how y'all looking out here, man. Y'all looking bad. You know what I'm saying? Come on, have some faith in your squad for God's sakes. Alfred, thank you very much for 499. Says we get the great value, guys. They don't have the big names, but they're pretty good. Exactly. And Alfred, 
It's because of the coaching staff. That's what it's about. It's about the coaching staff. Do you, <laughs> y'all don't trust the team? Y'all don't trust the staff? How do y'all think these, these players got so good? How is it that I'm having a conversation about Marcus Williams? The Saints drafted the guy. The Saints drafted Marcus Williams. And they, they, they developed him into a guy that could go out here and get elite safety money. What are you doing? What are you doing, man? Have some dignity. Gregory says, what do you think about the recent releases? I think that it was a smart move. I think that it was a means to an end. And I think it was necessary. I think it was necessary, folks. They needed to do it. None of these guys were on the team before last season. So I know that the Saints can live without. I know they can't. Call me naive. Call me crazy. <sighs> Whatever. But I trust this squad. I trust this coaching staff. I trust this front office. They make things work. True Louisiana laughing. Ramsey said, TJ, my birthday is in two days after St. Patrick Day. I'm, I'm turning 21 on the 19th. Well, you know, when that day, when that day comes, Ramsey, I'm gonna wish you a happy birthday. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna be doing the show, man. But so I know, you know, I'll just go ahead and wish you a happy birthday now. But you know, I'm pretty sure I'll do a show so I can officially do it for you, man. Daniel says Saints releasing all the talent. Emmanuel Sanders also playoff looking foggy even more. Oh, yeah, because Man, I tell you what, boy, man, you're Sanders, boy, I tell you. Yeah, without him, the Saints, boy, that's, that's boy, they one in 16. You know what I'm saying? They because they got an extra game. They they, they one in 16. The Saints going, you know, two and fifteen. Boy, it's over. Boy, go ahead and close up shop because a 34-year-old wide receiver who wasn't on the team prior to last year is it, it, getting cut. Oh man, Quan Alexander. Oh my goodness, man. Oh, the sky's falling. A guy that came into the the, the on the team in the middle of the season when the season was almost over is no longer here. The sky's falling. My goodness, man. Let me go ahead and close up shop. Uh, this has been the State of the Saints podcast. It is yours truly, TJ Jones. Nothing need, no, nothing needs to be talked about anymore because we we lost two guys that were not on the team last year. Daniel, I love you, but come on, man. Have some faith in your squad. Have some faith in your squad, man. Have some faith. Boy, boy, these, boy these moves got us shook. Mighty Mouse, thank you very much for the $10. Says Williams is ranked 13 in NFL for safeties. This was a smart move that the Saints did. Also, it would be better to have a young receiver core. <coughs> Excuse me. So it was a smart move to release Sanders. Thank you very much, Mighty Mouse, for the $10. And that's very logical of you to say. I don't understand why these Saints fans are so scared, man. I don't. I, I don't. Cut the TV off, man. Cut the TV off. Y'all, y'all are uh y'all scared to death. And Daniel, I'm only kidding, man. And you make some you make a valid point. I understand you're ner you're nervous, you're scared, but at the same time, man. I just have, I, I got faith. I, I, I got faith. I got faith. Let's see. Uh, TJ, I have no doubts the Saints will make it to the playoffs, but can we get to the Super Bowl? We need players to help us get over the hump. And who's to say that we won't get them? Who say we won't get them? You, you have to, you have to change it up. You, you have to change it up. And, and who's to say that we can't get, Better, cheaper players. That's where your coaching staff come in. We were a Super Bowl ready team. Drew was the only question mark. Now we have a bunch of holes. Uh, I feel like this. I don't think the Saints gonna have a lot of holes. I think that unlike how it was last year, I don't think they're gonna have as much depth. You might have a drop off at a, a huge drop off at some of these other positions, uh, but. Like I said, I trust, I trust the coaching staff. I trust the coach staff. I hope Chris Rashard makes our secondary legion a boom in 2021 like he did with the Seahawks, DBs, 
Uh, you can call me crazy all you want, but I want us to be a top five defense. I think I want us all to be a top five defense. You know, I, I think we all I think we all want us to be a top five defense. Excuse me. I'm looking at the comments and trying to talk at the same time. Like TJ says, have some faith in your squad. That's all I'm saying. I'm super excited for this next chapter. And like I said, man, look, I'm a Saints fan through and through. I, I Look, I guess, you know, I'm prepared. I am prepared for the Saints to go through some growing pains. <laughs> I, I've seen worse, you know. <laughs> like Maybe some of y'all ain't seen worse. And I get it. You know what I'm saying? I have to I have to understand who I'm talking to here. Some of y'all never really seen the Saints like really down bad. You know, like I don't think some of y'all ever seen the Saints like at their worst, like so pathetic. Like, why am I watching this? I don't think nobody really I, I don't think a lot of people have. Maybe some of y'all have. I mean, I'm looking at my analytics. A lot of you all are like range between like maybe like 20 and 25. There's a high percentage of people like in there, you know the early 20s, uh, mid-20s that, that that watch this show, and I appreciate some of y'all youngsters out here, but all y'all remember is prosperity with the Saints. You know, when the Saints were around this thing looking, ba- looking bad, y'all was watching Rugrats and Rocco's Modern Life and, and you know, and and uh, I Real Monsters and stuff, you know, but me, I can remember those tough times. I remember the Swagman bag on the head, you know what I'm saying? I remember the Canal Villery bag over the head. I remember the Dale Shams bag over the head. I remember when when you go in the Foot Locker and there was a rack full of Saints starter jackets. I remember those days, folks. And I know a couple of you already do too. You know, I'm not just talking to myself here. I got a, a you know a nice little viewship uh, for people that's in their 30s and up there as well. So y'all y'all feel what I'm talking about here. But I trust this team. I trust the squad. I trust the fact that Sean Payton and his coaching staff are going to embrace this. And everything about the New Orleans Saints over the last couple of years, like I said, I just don't understand it, man. I just don't understand, like, why? Drew Brees has missed nine games in the last two years, and the Saints have went eight and one. I'm going to say that again. In two years, Drew Brees has missed nine games. And the Saints have went eight and one. So that ought to tell you that, damn, we pretty good at the uh, the quarterback uh, position because Sean Payton going to do what he has to do to make the quarterback succeed. Uh, we've seen guys get hurt, go down. You know, we've we seen people on the line get hurt. Next man up. Uh, we seen linebackers get hurt. Next man up. We seen people in the secondary, and they do a, a good enough job. I, okay, the Saints played without Marshawn Lattimore and Janoris Jenkins last season, and and they had PJ Williams on one side and Patrick Robinson on the other, and they won. So call me naive. Call me naive, folks, but. Everything that we're concerned about, we seen. Like, what, what are we doing here? Oh, the wide receiver position, what are we going to do? Did we not see Mike T miss the majority of the season? Did we not see Emmanuel Sanders miss two games with COVID and Marquez Callaway and Traquan Smith and Deontay Harris stepped up? Did we not see this? All of the things that we are concerned about. <laughs> We have seen guys step in that position and play really well. From quarterback, from linebacker, from cornerback, from line, defensive line, offensive line, we have seen guys step up. So what in the heck are we afraid of? What are we afraid of? We have, You have seen... These things come <laughs> it happen right before your eyes. Guys go down. Pick right back up. Dada Saints number one says, uh, first off, thank you for the five dollars. Said TJ, you cracking me up, fan scared of what the Saints doing, but not me. Yeah, not me. Not me. I'm not afraid. You know, I'm just not. I'm not. You ain't scared either. I trust our staff. Yeah, yeah. 
It shouldn't be. I'm excited to see what Sean can do. That's when you got to trust your coach. Uh, TJ, how would you feel if we were to make it to the Super Bowl? Would you be okay with an honorary signing of Breeze just to have that chance of getting that second ring? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I would. I would, but, you know, it's not going to go towards his legacy. It's almost like Carson Wentz. You know, Carson Wentz is a Super Bowl champion, but they don't give him credit because Nick Foles did it. So, yeah, you can make him honorary captain. You know, I think they did the same thing with Deuce McAllister, if I'm not mistaken. They signed him, and he got a Super Bowl ring. But, TJ, they sound like uh, we are going back to the paper bag days. Maybe they think that. But I think it has a lot to do with Tampa. You know, you may not want to admit it, but it's true. It has a lot to do with Tampa. It's the fact that the Super Bowl champion is in our division. We didn't talk so much noise over the years. Talking to talking to uh talking about Tampa, talking about Atlanta, talking about Carolina. Now all of a sudden, we nervous because now we feel like we about to roll up and have to sit at a table and eat a big huge bowl of crow. Well, I mean, you think the way that you want to, man, but you got to have belief in your squad, man, and, and you can't you know, just assume the worst. You know, you got to be optimistic about this. But like I said, everything that you're afraid of, we've already seen. I just want to I just want to make that perfectly clear. Alfred, thank you very much for the 499 says not to keep talking about Drew. But say if we went to the Super Bowl next year and we win with that same supported cast, do you think it hurts his legacy? Uh, No, uh, no, absolutely not, because. Alfred, you have to look at the fact that how old Drew Brees was. Now, if this was a uh, 32, 33-year-old Drew, uh, 32, 33-year-old Drew Brees, then maybe we'll be, uh, you know, speaking another language, or, or speak, you know what I'm saying, uh, you know, talking differently. But here's the thing. Drew Brees is doing something that m- not many quarterbacks have done. He's playing into his 40s. Right. So the fact that Drew Brees helped the Saints go to the postseason twice in his 40s is a testament to Drew Brees. Now, anything after that is pretty much, you know, I mean, just a miracle. So if if we were talking about Drew Brees, 32, 33 years old doing this, then I'd be like, OK, you know, what I'm saying, yeah, this going to hurt his legacy. But, you know, by him going now. By him going and, you know, missing, the, I mean, looking bad in the playoffs year after year. Now, that's hurting his legacy. Him not playing lights out, that hurt his legacy. But not this. But not this. That wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. But if he was in his prime, then it definitely would hurt it even more. Loving the Saints all season moves so far, to be honest, just got to get rid of Pete. <laughs> uh, that's not going to happen. They like him. And they, they like him. I don't think anyone is afraid. I think we are looking at what uh, could possibly get us to the Super Bowl since we have failed to do so with a great roster. Uh, now, nah, Kelly, I have to disagree. I just think they're scared. I think you're scared. I think you're scared because, number one, you never seen life outside of Drew Brees, some of y'all. Like I said, some of you are too young to remember that. And number two, like I said, you talk so much trash. You talk so much noise to some of these other teams. Y'all have infiltrated NFC South groups. Y'all have y'all have put up the black and gold banner. And y'all have told everybody how the Saints are just the best and y'all just here. And now we're looking at the cap. And now we're looking at Tampa. And now we're looking at Drew Brees retiring. Now, all of a sudden, we scared and shook, and now we want to talk about what we're going to do. That's what the problem is. I don't care what anybody says. Ain't nobody just sitting up here talking about, yeah, we had the squad for four years, and this happened. And Nah, bro. Scared. Shook. It's obvious that Loomis knows what he's doing, considering he's been uh, there since the early 2000s. Exactly. Yeah, P-Rob going too. That's not a surprise. 
man, I just feel bad. Drew Brees has to go out this way to let Tom Brady come in the South, kick him out of the playoffs and win a Super Bowl. Well, look, <laughs> Drew Brees did it to himself. Drew Brees did it to himself when Drew Brees was out there playing with a plethora of injuries, which I respect him for. He's a he's a he's a gladiator. He's a warrior. But he did it to himself, man. Mediocre quarterback playing the playoffs, throwing all those interceptions. You know, I mean, <laughs> you, you got to look at it that way, man. I, I don't want to hear anything about. Oh, if, if 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 Jared Cook would have caught the ball, uh, if, 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 if the old line of block for him, nah, bro. When you're the best quarterback, when you're an elite quarterback, you play your best football in the postseason. It is time for us to stop making all these excuses for Drew Brees in the postseason. Drew Brees has played mediocre at best over the last. I say about the last four or five playoff appearances, he's been playing like straight up mediocre. And I don't feel bad for saying this. When you're an elite quarterback, you're supposed to play lights out. Drew Brees has not played lights out. Don't give me that stuff about the Minneapolis miracle because I can easily tell you about those two interceptions that Drew Brees threw in the first half that put the Saints behind the eight ball. And yeah, he did bring the Saints back, but why were the Saints in that position in the first place? Why were they in that position? I could talk about in the NFC Championship game how the Saints had, just like against Tampa in the divisional round, the Saints had two opportunities in the red zone that could have put them up and made it tough for the Rams to come back, and yet they're kicking field goals. That is what I'm talking about here. You got to be playing your best football in the postseason. So do I feel bad for Drew Brees? No, I do not. I do not feel sorry for Drew Brees. I don't. I love Drew, but I don't feel sorry for him. Drew Brees gets all of the credit when when the Saints win these football games. But we don't want to give Drew Brees no type, no type of, uh, you know what I'm saying, no type of blame whatsoever when things go wrong. It's always the O-line fault. It's always a pass catcher didn't catch the ball right. But let's go ahead and watch the game. Let's see why they're in this hole in the first place. No, I don't feel bad. I don't. Because the Saints were good enough. They were good enough to win the Super Bowl. And if Drew Brees was not limited, most likely the Saints would be in the Super Bowl. I mean, honestly, let's look at the Minnesota Vikings game. Drew Brees wasn't even the best quarterback on his team in that game that day. Taysom Hill was. Like, you let people like Case Keenum, Jared Goff knock you out the playoffs, Alex Smith. I mean, look, I mean, what are we talking about here, man? No, I don't feel sorry for Drew. I don't. I love him, but I don't feel sorry for him. If, if, If the Superdome was crowded, if they had 64, 65,000 fans inside the Superdome, the Boo Birds would have been in full effect for Drew Brees this past offseason. I mean, pre postseason. They would have been in full effect. Y'all would have, like, that's the best thing that ever happened to Drew Brees, that there were very few fans in the crowd. And, and the television could not pick up the fans in the stands because 65,000 people would have booed Drew Breeze. And don't tell me that I'm tripping because if you look at Twitter, if you look at the State of Saints podcast, if you look at some of these other Saints uh, podcasts, you look at some of these groups, everybody is saying, I love Drew, but it's time to go. Don't tell me that he wouldn't have got booed in the Superdome. He would have. Oh, TJ, man, you can't talk about Drew Breeze like that. Don't talk about my quarterback like that. Man, bump that. It is time out for all of the 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 the, the, the rose colored glasses BS. The Saints need a quarterback that can get that ball down the field. That is what's been missing. That is what's been missing from the Saints. The Saints' inability to create the kill shot when they up in a game. When, when they have opportunity to really put their stake on the game, 
They can't get, they can't go for the kill shot. They can't. So no, I do not. I, I do not. TJ, I love the all season every year. So much entertainment. I agree. I agree. So much entertainment. It's always fun, man. It's always fun to see, you know, players go to other teams and see them, you know, in different uniforms when the season starts. I know it probably won't happen, but about signing uh, Richard Sherman to a one year deal. He played with Chris Rashad. I wouldn't be mad at that. I wouldn't be mad at, uh, I wouldn't be mad at Richard Sherman being with the Saints. Damien says, I'm all the way late uh, from working a graveyard shift, woke up to use the restroom <laughs> and saw the best sports show on. I appreciate that, Damien. Thank you, man. Uh, Zach says they were playing the best defense that year. Exactly. Exactly. You talking about people I feel sorry for. If he was hurt, uh, he could have said that at halftime, put Winston in, Sean and Drew probably got the best of them, so I don't feel bad as well. No, nah, I don't feel bad at all. You know what you was doing. You know what you was doing, man. <sighs> Look, anybody that say that Drew Brees don't have an ego, I got I got three different scenarios that'll tell you that he, he does have an ego. Uh, number one, um, let's talk about that wild card game against Minnesota. We seen Taysom Hill throw a 55-yard touchdown to uh, Deontay Harris, right? Drew Brees tries to go out there, tries to throw a ball deep, and gets an intercept. Right? The, the very next play, the very next drive, that's what he does. Now, come on, dude. You, you ain't throw a pass, pass, pass uh, 20 yards all year long. Now, all of a sudden, you want to go out there and be Patrick Mahomes? That's number one. Number two, rushing yourself back after – uh, Teddy Bridgewater won five straight games. Teddy Bridgewater, like honestly, people weren't checking for Teddy Bridgewater in New Orleans. It was it was a lot of mixed emotions here. A lot of people didn't like Teddy Bridgewater. Rather it be the fact that you didn't really see him play, uh, didn't think he was that good. Some people, you know, for obvious reasons, you know, guy went five games. And all of a sudden, Drew Brees has to come back versus the Arizona Cardinals going into a bye week. Hmm, interesting. Drew Brees again, fractures 11 ribs, has a collapsed lump, misses the games. What, miss what, four games? Comes back for the fifth game, all to play against Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs. I don't care what anybody says. Man, well, well, Drew gives us the best position, put us in the best position to win. Man, bump all that. Drew Brees came back because he probably realized this was his last opportunity to go up against a young Patrick Mahomes, and he rushed himself back. So anybody that tells me that Drew Brees doesn't have an ego, I will have to disagree with you. Once again, I love Drew Brees, but the guy does not turn water into wine. He does not walk on water. You know what I'm saying? He did not rise from the dead in three days. This guy can be criticized. And no, <clears throat> I don't feel sorry for him. I don't feel bad for him at all. And I feel like if he does come back, I feel like that would not be the right move. It would not be the right move. Sorry. Well, I want to see Drew come back. I, I, I think that Drew has something left in the tank. Look. Why would you want this guy to exhaust everything that he has? And a lot of you are selfish anyway. Yeah, I said it. A lot of you are selfish. You know, you want Drew Brees to come back for selfish reasons. Your own selfish reasons. Don't care nothing about this man's health. Don't care nothing about this man's well-being. I mean, where y'all there? You know what I'm saying? If, if you notice, like, or pay attention to when people have fractured ribs, they can barely sleep in their bed at night. They have to you know, a lot of these guys are, you know, talking about when they, they fractured their ribs. Like, they couldn't even sleep in a bed. They had to sleep in a chair, coughing up blood. Like, do y'all, th like, think about this. Your your, your wife or your, uh, your husband with cracked ribs, coughing in the middle of the night, coughing up blood, having to run to the bathroom, feel like he gagging. Like, are you, are you putting the towel by his face to wipe the blood off? Or are you, you know what I'm saying, like, holding their hair? Make sure it don't fall in the toilet. Like, are you doing this? 
Like these are serious injuries that we're talking about here. And we're talking about a guy who has four children. And you think his wife wants him to continue to do this game called football? When you, when you got shoulder injuries, foot injuries, and 11 fractured ribs and a collapsed lung? Nah, bro. You can keep that. I don't, I don't care. Like It's time out for the fake stuff. It's time out. It's time out for, you know, you know, being politically correct. Drew Brees needs to retire. Drew Brees needs to retire. I'm scared of Levante David and Devin White. Well, I think you should have been afraid of them <laughs> even before all this happened. What quarterback does not have an ego? Every quarterback has an ego, but for some apparent reason, Saints fans feel like their quarterback doesn't. You know, Drew Brees does. Uh, you should. Uh, let's see. Sean Payton knows it's time to move on from Drew. Yeah, absolutely. And if y'all don't believe it, let's see if he's going to come back this year. Man, these guys know what's up. These guys in the locker room know what's happening. They know that Drew Brees can't get the ball down the field. They know Drew Brees is limited. You can't fool these guys, bruh. Like, shouts out to my guy Rashad Matthews who was on the show a couple of days ago. Do y'all not see this guy talking, how he was talking, saying that Matt felt like I was better than this guy, better than that guy? You don't think these guys are having these type of conversations inside of the locker room? Y'all don't think these guys are having these type of conversations? Do you not think that these guys go home to their wives or, you know what I'm saying, girlfriends or moms, aunts or whatever? Be like, man, shoot, man, man, bro. I was open, man. Dude couldn't get me the ball. Y'all don't think these dudes having this conversation? Oh, they stand behind the mic. Well, he said, well, I, I think that I, I could have ran a route a little bit better. I think it was on me. It's on me. Y'all really think these like these guys are trying to make you feel good, right? They're telling you all the things that you want to hear. Oh, he's such a nice guy. Oh, he's such a team first guy. Okay. Okay, keep on believing that these guys aren't living in the same world as us. Keep on believing that these guys don't think the way that we do. Keep on keep on taking bread out of these guys' mouth and see what really happens here. Keep on believing that if y'all want to, man. I, I watched the interview. He said that he, he looking forward to playing with them next year. Of course he going to say that. What are you going to say, man? Shoot. Dude can't even throw the ball down the field 20 yards, man. Shoot. He need to go ahead and go home. You think God, You think guys are really going to say something like that? Or are they going to say the politically correct thing that's going to continue to get them paid? How come, you, uh, how come you don't go to a job that you hate and just be like, you know, get the hell out of my face to your boss? How come you don't go to your job and, and just say, you know, forget this job? In so many words, y'all know the word I'm looking for, but we PG here on the State of the Saints podcast for the most part. How come you don't say that? Because you need your money. You need your money. So you don't think these guys do the same thing? Y'all don't think these guys do the same thing? Oh, they're such a nice guy. Oh, they're such a nice guy. I, 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 I can eat dinner with him. Okay. Keep on taking bread out of guy's mouth. Keep on making a guy limited. Keep on telling a guy that he trash on Twitter when a guy knows that he has a lot to offer, but he's limited. Keep on doing that and see what really happens. Richard Sanders says, is it true the Saints were interested in Tom Brady had Drew retired after 2019 season? That is absolutely correct, Richard. Most likely Tom Brady would have been a Saint. And I know some uh, Saints fans probably won't, don't want to admit it, but I will. How many of us uh, wish that that could have happened? <laughs> huh? I'm just being real. I'm just being real. You you thought about that one time or another. It's just time, man. I agree. Pat saw the light. I'm late as usual. What up? Who that? That was going on, man. Better late than never. Uh, Patrick says, if Breeze comes back, Trade him, Pete Thomas. Uh, <laughs> this year first, 
uh, and next year for Winston and Metcalf and their next year. Man. <laughs> Man, what world are you living in right here? Okay, there's Pat. I love you, my friend. Thank you for coming with it. But let me let me go ahead and tell you this, man. Train Drew Brees, Pete and Thomas. And you're going to get Russell Wilson and, and DK Metcalf. Dude. You trade Thomas, you're going to be eating about $21 million. You trade Andrews Pete, you're going to be eating about a, a good $8 million. And Drew Brees has a no trade cl- uh, clause in his contract. So that eliminates that. Right? So not happening. Not happening, man. Limited and predictable, ask Devin White. Everyone all right? <laughs> Yeah, man, you can't you can't get them, man. You can't get them. A lot of things. LMAO Patrick. Let's see. Buck fan in this joint. Uh, thank you for being here, man. Appreciate you stopping by. OG, I had to do it. I don't know exactly what you did. <laughs> I, have to, I have to see what uh, Goldface did. Okay, he said I, I saved a lot of money on my car insurance. Okay, I got you. Uh, Patrick smoking that dust, boy. <laughs> I'm glad Tom didn't uh, become a saint because that Super Bowl Tom Brady won, uh, Tampa Bay won, would be always in the conversation that they had to get Brady to win a Super Bowl. Well, it's in a conversation for Tampa, so what's the difference? And, and honestly, who cares? You know, like, who cares? Like, you're a Super Bowl champion. You can talk about that all you want to. Is that going to stop you from being a Super Bowl champion? No. So I take it. What up, TJ? Saints fans scared to face reality, but at the end of the day, I'm a Saints fan for life. Goes on after Drew Brees, Mike T, Kamar, Cam Jordan, all the ones we love. We just have to appreciate them while they're here. I agree. I agree, Chosen. You know, a lot of people be scared, man. A lot of people scared. They 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 rooting for a team that they don't want to feel like a loser. You know. It's okay to take L sometime. I know the world that we live in now tells you I ain't taking no loss. I ain't taking no L. That's what they say, right? We see Mayweather, 49 and 0, 50 and 0. He ain't never took no loss, right? Guys go to UFC. Man, he, he ain't take no loss. All of a sudden he lose. Oh, he lost. He lost. Oh, he lost. <laughs> you know, like we're, we're afraid to take L's. But let's be real, man. We all taking L's in life. We all taking L's. Some of us are taking L's right now. But it's okay. It's okay to take an L. It's okay to lose. It's okay to lose. It's okay to... It's okay to take an L, man. I ain't got no problem with that. You should have no problem with that. You got it, it got to get ugly before it get beautiful. Ain't that what Chris Brown said? You know, because it can get ugly before it get beautiful. Well, maybe that's that's the wrong person to use. Uh, being politically correct, thank you very much for the two dollars. Says, uh, I keep fools paid. <laughs> but thank you very much for the two dollars. I really do appreciate that. Politically correct. Uh, yeah, man. Look, it's okay to take L sometime. And like I said at the beginning of the show, I'm prepared. I am prepared uh, for the Saints to. Go through some growing pains in order for them to get better because I'm a Saints fan regardless. My my fandom is not determined by how many games the Saints win. Just get to the playoffs is not a seven-game series. What's up, TJ? What's going on, Jay? Wistful thinking. I just want a Super Bowl at this point. I think we all do. I think we all just kind of frustrated. This is why we are here, Who That Nation, to talk Saints football during the season or the offseason. Yep. I'm going to go now. Hope y'all have a good rest of your day. Idris, take care, man. Appreciate you stopping by. Tony says, the Aints have no money. Ah, ha, 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 ha. Uh, let the snowball and begin. Tight end Jared Cook. Now Emmanuel Sanders, $42 million over the cap. 
Isn't Tony a, 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 a Falcon fan? Aren't you a Falcon fan? Look, dude, you this is the third time I see you up in here chirping. You know, hold on. This is the third time I seen you come in here chirping, dude. So I'm going to give you what you want. The Atlanta Falcons are an embarrassment to the NFC South. They're an embarrassment to the NFC South. First off, don't be coming up in here with a Saints hired GM. Don't, don't, don't come up in here with that. Y'all had to go and look at the Saints and hire a, a GM that came from the Saints. Y'all whole team was structured to beat the Saints. Y'all, y'all, y'all had this offense because y'all seen the Saints offensive firepower, and yet y'all still couldn't make it to the Super Bowl. And then when y'all did make it to the Super Bowl, y'all gave up a 25-point lead and have not done anything since then. So while you up here worried about the Saints, you need to be worried about your team, a team that has been swept by the New Orleans Saints last year, a team that is the epitome of a disgrace, a team that quarterback is on borrowed time, a team that wide receiver is on a borrowed time, and a team that can't stop traffic with a stop sign. So if you're an Atlanta Falcon fan and you're on the State of the Saints podcast, understand this. You guys are nowhere near where the New Orleans Saints are. You guys change up the uniform. You change up your stadium. You got your owner looking out like Count Chocula up in here. And y'all still can't win no football games. How can a guy who owns Home Depot don't know how to put in no work? How can a team that is has, has Hall of Famers on it like Julio Jones, has good linebackers like Debo Jones, and can't win more than seven football games. How can you have a quarterback who is supposed to be a Hall of Famer and Matt Ryan, who throw more picks than Razor Ramon, who has more turnovers than your local Krispy Kreme? How in the world can y'all sit up here and talk about the New Orleans Saints? The, the Atlanta Falcon fan base is a disgrace. A bunch of casual fans who come to the game to look cute, who probably film in their version of the Real Housewives or House Husbands of Atlanta. They come to the game so they can look good. They go up in here, they go to the little malls and restaurants and don't even pay attention to the game. And they only become fans when the win record is better than the loss record. Miss me with that. Nobody cares about you all. You are a laughing stock. Three straight weeks of you guys giving up big leads Miss me, Atlanta, with the BS. Now, y'all can stay and chill out. That's fine. I'm glad that you're here. But understand where you're at. Understand that you're in the basement. Understand that Tampa came back on y'all in the second game that you all played them <laughs> to win a football game when y'all had like a 21 to, what, 21 to nothing lead. Then y'all came out of the the, the, y'all, y'all came out of halftime, scored again, 28 to 7. And Tom Brady came out there and came back on y'all clowns. How in the world can you sit up here with a straight face, sitting up here on your keyboard or your phone and have the audacity, the mitigated gall to talk about the New Orleans Saints when your team has done absolutely nothing for the past three years, except be the doormat of the NFC South? a disgrace but thank you tony thank you for being here we really do appreciate it here on the state of saints podcast let's see tj uh tim going ham ragged failures of the franchise damn you just schooled a falcon fan matt ryan looks like a skittish cat in a pocket tj he assessed I, i mean look When you got great content like the State of the Saints podcast, I can understand why you want to watch. But understand, just because you're watching the show, don't mean that your boy don't know what's going on in Atlanta, all right? I mean, you know, I I mean, look, there's much more going on in Atlanta than Candy Burroughs. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's way more going on than Needy Leaks. 
There's a lot of leaks in your defense. There's a lot of leaks in your offense. There's a lot of leaks in your front office. And once again, you got a New Orleans Saints front office guy to run your team. So there's nothing you can tell me. You can't say, well, y'all suck. We can't suck that bad if y'all coming out here and sucking the talent from our team to make your team better. So always remember, no matter how much success that you all have, and I'm wishing Terry Fott no success because, you know what I'm saying, like I, I'm, I'm rooting for the brother, except when he played the Saints. No matter how much success y'all have, no matter how many games y'all win, y'all had to come and, and uh, pillage and pilfer the New Orleans Saints in order for y'all to get over the hump. So miss me with the BS. Love every minute, TJ. Get them. I see facts. You mean the great Matt Ryan and great Julio Jones? Uh, Yeah, the great Julio Jones. Matt Ryan is not great. Average at best, okay? Average at best. Uh, Falcons getting roasted today. They get roasted every day. They get roasted every time. 26 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, and a 7-9 and nine record, and three Three, <laughs> three comfort behind uh, victories from the, the from the opponent. I, if I have time, I would like to pull them up for you. But you can live in the land of delusion if you want to. I know Atlanta Falcon fans, y'all live in the land of delusion for some apparent reason. Like I don't know if y'all got one of those men in black neuralizers that that uh, Tommy Lee Jones and Will Smith uses in a movie, and y'all just neuralize your brains and you forget. The fact that the Saints been waxing y'all tails for the last couple of years. But you guys suck. Like, I'm, like it, it ain't even funny. Like, you guys suck. Y'all not a very good football team. Y'all not a very good ran football team. Count Chocula, a.k.a. Arthur Blank, has done a horrible job at getting guys to come into your organization to make it better. I mean, it's just facts. Look at the facts here. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not telling you nothing that you don't already know. Y'all not very good. Y'all not a very good football team. Defensively, y'all suck. Offensively, y'all suck. Special teams. I mean, need I say more? Look what y'all did with the Cowboys. Y'all suck. Seven and nine. Y'all suck. Giving up big leads. Suck. Losing to the Saints twice. Suck. Letting Tampa Bay come back on y'all late in the second half. Suck. Like, even if there were allowing fans inside the stadium, nobody would come because you suck. And Atlanta is a melting pot. You got people from all across the country that come to Atlanta because Atlanta is the place where dreams come true for some apparent reason. Everybody flock to Atlanta. Like, Anytime things go wrong, anything happens in life, man, I'm going to Atlanta because Atlanta changed everything. I don't know if people seen Menace to Society or they seen Poetic Justice or they seen uh, any other movie where life just automatically changes or Boys in the Hood. I think Cuba Good Jr. and, and Neil Long went to Atlanta. One went to Spell and one went to Morehouse. Yeah, everybody says the land where dreams come true. That's because they come from everywhere. So it's a bunch of casual fans. Y'all casual. Y- y- you can't get more casual than Atlanta Falcon fan. They so casual. I mean, they walk around with suits and ties. You know what I'm saying? They they, they so casual. It seems like they're getting ready for a business interview. I, I mean, I, I just don't get it, man. I, I I don't understand it. You know, like I, I haven't seen people on Zoom calls more casual. I haven't seen people go to grad night more casual. A bunch of casual fans trying to tell passionate Saints fans about their team. Like, give me a freaking break, dude. Next. Next, man. What, what, what are we doing here? What the heck are we doing here, man? Somebody get this is an Atlanta Falcon fan out of here. The NFL draft. Thank you very much for the $2. Says one day we'll have as many picks as the Falcons. <laughs> ah, man. Somebody get this Atlanta Falcon fan up out of here, man. Knock it off. Come on, man. Messing up our show talking about the Falcons. The Falcons? The Falcons? Like, come on, man. I can see. Look, I see Tampa, Carolina. Falcons? Man, next question, man. What are are we talking about here? I'm not delusional. I want us to tank, but I love your show. (laughs) 
Matt Ryan doesn't even crack the top 100 players list going into last year. Falcon fans going down bad. Man, like, what are we talking about here, man? The, the Falcons? Seriously. Like, what are we talking about, bro? Like, what are we, uh, uh, bro? But I do want to talk about something, man, before I get up out of here. I want to talk about Alex Azzalone. <laughs> Speaking of a rant. I want to talk about Alex Azzalone because Alex Azzalone went on a sports show and he talked about entering free agency. Uh, he talked about how he enjoyed his time with the New Orleans Saints. But he also talked about the Saints signing Quan Alexander in the middle of the season. He said he felt like it was a slap in the face. So Alex Azzalone felt like he was being slapped in the face because the New Orleans Saints decided to go get Quan Alexander. Now, I'm not going to sit up here and act as if, you know, Alex Azzalone didn't give us good moments in the Who That Nation. I mean, Alex Azzalone gave us moments like this. Ryan throws underneath Jones using the speed. Julio across the 20. Ball is out. It's free. And the Saints recover. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty good, right? And speaking of Atlanta Falcons, that, that goes again. Matter of fact, let's show that again. Ryan throws underneath Jones using the speed. Julio across the 20. Ball is out. It's free. And the Saints recover. I mean, he gave us moments like that, right? Yeah, I mean, it's a good moment, right? Forcing a fumble on Julio Jones. But for every play like this, he gives us plays like, like this. Saints are on him. And the ball's out. It's in the end zone. Saints, oh, they can't hold on. I mean, inconsistent, right? So for every play he gives you, that's good. He gives you a play that's bad. Uh, sometimes he will wrap a guy up with the tackle, and the next day, you know, he'll whiff on the tackle, and the player will go for 20 yards. So, Alex Azzalone, <laughs> my brother, your first year with the New Orleans Saints was pretty good, man, until you messed your shoulder up and missed the entire season when we played the Miami Dolphins in London. And you just been up and down, man. You've been a stock market. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then eventually, you became Robin Hood. You know what I'm saying? For those that probably know about the stock market and Robin Hood cutting people off, y'all know what I'm talking about here. You started up here, and then, you know what I'm saying, you start wavering around. And that is what we don't need. You need consistency at the linebacker position. And you shouldn't feel bad that the Saints went out there and got Quine Alexander because the Saints wouldn't even be thinking about getting Quine Alexander or they wouldn't even be thinking about uh, trading Beagle uh, for um, – What's your guy's name? Um, man, uh, Alonzo, Kiko Alonzo. They wouldn't even be thinking about getting Kiko Alonzo if you were actually doing your job. He didn't do his job. You didn't do your job consistently, uh, consistently, Alex. So that's the reason why you're in free agency right now. And I wish you a lot of success. I'm pretty sure he probably going to end up going to the Lions, you know, or uh, or some other team, you no. Know, I'm pretty sure that he's going to get a fair shot, and I'm I know he's going to be a pretty consistent player. But Alex Azzalone dug his own grave. This guy got his own shovel and started to dig. You had an opportunity to make a splash. The Saints gave you an opportunity going into training camp. It was your job to lose, and guess what, homie? You lost it. You lost your job. You lost your job because you are not consistent. We don't need inconsistency. We don't need that. The Saints don't need that. And you cannot be inconsistent at the linebacker position. That's the reason why the Saints decided to go get Quan Alexander. And he played better than you. He played better than you, Alex. He played better than you. He was much more of a short tackler. Yeah, he whiffed on that, that play, you know, against the Philadelphia Eagles. But besides that, he did one hell of a job. So good that when he tore his Achilles, we thought the sky was falling, which it was. Let me, I'm, I'm going to say this. When Quiet Alexander came to the team, 
we seen Demario Davis play like the best linebacker in football. When you're on the field, Demario Davis just looks like one of the guys. And do you know why? Because he has to do more because you're out there. He has to do less when Quine was out there. So stop whining and boohooing. <laughs> they got Quine. <laughs> why didn't you choose me? That's because you're inconsistent. You're inconsistent, dude. Once again, for every play like this. Ryan throws underneath Jones using the speed. Julio across the 20. Ball is out. It's free. And the Saints recover. He gave you plays like this. Saints are on him. And the ball's out. It's in the end zone. Saints. Oh, they can't hold on. End of story. But all joking aside, man, your defensive line and linebackers are very, very good. Tony, I thank you so much, man. I appreciate that. One of y'all linebackers is really good, okay? And that's Debo Jones. <laughs> I can't think of any big-name linebackers out there. Don't need them. Don't need them. We don't need big-name linebackers. We need consistent linebackers. Give me, like, Demario Davis wasn't a big name. Demario Davis wasn't a big name. Was 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 AJ Klein a big name? We knew him because he played for Carolina, but he wasn't a big name. He wasn't. We fall so much in love with these big names. The the the, 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 the Seattle's uh Seattle Seahawks signed. I don't know. Uh give me a big name. Ty Gurley. Oh my god. Oh, oh, The Pittsburgh Steelers signed Rashad Penny. Oh. The Washington football team signed the Davion Cloudy. Oh, oh my God. Oh, oh. The New Orleans Saints signed Kyle, Kyle Rudolph. Boy, we love a marquee name, boy. We like a name in bright lights. Right, that's that got the you know what I'm saying a twitching light that blinks. We love that. I want consistency. I don't care what his name is. His name could be Joe Blow, Joe Wheeler, you know, Joey Lawrence. Whoa, I don't give a you know what. As long as the dude go come out there and play, I can care less. I can care less. I just want consistency. I just want a guy when he puts his name. On the marquee, I want to make a tackle. I want to bring the guy down to the ground. That is what I want. That is what I want from the players. I don't care what his name is. We need to get away from this stuff. We need to get away from these names, man. As long as the guy can play. You know what I'm saying? I don't care what his name is. Y'all falling apart. Uh, shortly but surely. Uh, you mean slowly but surely. Okay. <laughs> and not really. Not really. TJ, what would you do with the Saints signing Johnny Manziel after the FCS season? Uh, what I would, uh, what would I do? You talking about if they signed him? <laughs> I mean, that would be terrible. And if we talking about signing him now, nah, heck no, nah, that boy horrible. Uh, man, and drunk all the talent out of itself. Uh, Bobby says, if Jabril Cox falls to the second, Saints need to seriously look at drafting him. Saints need to stop overlooking studs at LSU. See Devin White, yeah, Chazon, and Queen, all productive in the NFL. Yeah, I don't understand that. I don't understand that. I, I mean, I get if they're too close to home. Uh, you know, you think that they might have like some – some people, you know what I'm saying, they might influence them. Look, these guys can play. They can ball. Sign them up. Sign them up. Saying I want him. I, I think I want Jabril Cox, too. You know, I, I think that he's a really good linebacker. Sky Shanley, exactly. Sky Vegeta. Yeah, Mark Seminole. I mean, so many guys. Like, these guys were not household names, but they were key contributors. 
Sign Manziel for what? <laughs> Custodial, <laughs> Custodial duties. He could clean the Superdome. Hmm. Johnny Manziel in New Orleans is not a good mix. And anybody that followed the career and the life of my Johnny Manziel, you know why. You need to get rid of Slant Thomas. All he does is run slants, and he makes $20 million a season trying to be up there making Julio 23.5, DeAndre Hopkins $22 million money. Man, Michael Thomas at this particular time is one of the best wide receivers in football. And y'all can talk about slants all you want to, but it just shows me that y'all ain't never ran a down in your entire life. And anybody that sits up here and talks about a guy just running slants never played football a day in their life because anybody that played the wide receiver position knows how hard it is to get off the line of scrimmage when you're being jammed. And the fact that this guy can get separation, not being one of the fastest receivers in football and still can get separation enough to run a slant is pretty incredible. And the fact that everybody's calling this guy slant God and all that kind of stuff well, it's a true testament to how great this guy really is. Look, if you know that I'm about to slap you in the face, right, and you don't put your hands up, that's on you. This guy runs the same route and you still can't stop it? That's on you. Okay? And the fact is, look, have you have you listened to the show? The guy runs these type of routes because of Drew Brees' limitations. Go back and watch Michael Thomas in 2016. Tell me if he was just running slant route. Tell me if he was just running those quick outs. Go ahead. Tell me. And, and I'll show you passes when you were catching the ball down the field, when he was catching deep posts. I mean, c- come on. Like, the dude is going with, with uh, you know, Drew Brees can do. But to say that this guy, all he does is run slants, he run, all he does is run slants because – he's helping Drew Brees. He's, you know what I'm saying? He's, he's helping his quarterback. And plus he's the number one receiver. So most, most likely he's going to get the majority of the, of the, of the, uh, the passes, the targets. TJ, what do you think about this? I say draft JC Horn and trade up to get Zayvon Collins, cut rabbit, uh, draft wide receiver, late rounds and trade Murray and Armstead for three, uh, first picks for Russ. Well, if you uh, you know, that's not bad. You know, that's not bad at all. If you can do that, if you can be that aggressive, not bad. I'm not. I don't agree with the Armstead thing, but it's not bad. You don't understand how our team is built. Obviously, he don't. Like I said, I mean, this is this is Twitter universe talking right here. You know, oh Michael Thomas do it run slants. Who cares? I don't care where you run, as long as the guy catch the ball. People who say Mike T is just a slant receiver, don't watch film. He's perfect and runs route tree in year two. Yep. TJ, I love how uh, other teams will come in here, run in their mouths, then turn around and compliment the Saints after you let them have <laughs> because Look, check this out, man. I appreciate every fan that, that comes from other teams that watch this show. Look, I I, I love it. You know what I'm saying? I, I love it. Tells me, number one, that the show is good. And also that, you know, you're passionate about your team and, you know, you're willing to come into the belly of the beast and, and, and talk, your, talk your ish. I can appreciate that. But trust and believe. If you come in here talking mad greasy, I might let it go. I might let it go for a while. But eventually... You're going to get your comeuppance, and you better come with it. You better come with it, man. And it better not just be just a bunch of nonsense and stuff that I've heard on social media that I see you up here copying and pasting. I come through with the numbers. I come through with the facts, okay? I don't care. Man, y'all suck. That's such, that's, that's so broad, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, And, and, and it's empty calories to me. But when I come and say for three straight weeks, y'all gave up big leads and y'all couldn't finish games, that is a fact. When I say that y'all gave up a 25-point lead in the Super Bowl, that is a fact. When I say that y'all defense can't stop traffic with a stop sign, that is a fact. When I tell you that you are the bottom of the NFC South, that is a fact. When I tell y'all y'all play second fiddle and y'all try to copy and paste everything the Saints do or y'all build y'all team around beating the Saints, that is a fact. 
when I tell you that you use the Saints front office guy to try to build your team, that is a fact. Saying that, yo, suck, means nothing to me. Tim, thank you very much for the $5. Says TJ, so we just released Sanders, so it's back to square one without a number two, or is it Trey Quan? I think they might roll with Trey Quan. Trey Quan did a pretty good job. Uh, all subject question, uh, what do you think about Seattle not putting Russell Wilson on their season uh, ticket letter? Uh, they mentioned DK, Lockett, Adams, and Coach Pete. Well, then in the GM. Well, I think they playing hardball, right? You come on television and you say, I'm not happy. I'm not satisfied. Trade me. These are the teams I want to go to. Bam, 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 and bam. Okay. Look, check this out. Nobody's bigger than the Shield. Nobody's bigger than the Seattle Seahawks. We were the Seattle Seahawks before you. We'll be the Seattle Seahawks after you. That is what I feel. They, they, they're playing hardball. And if you if you want to do it like that, we can do it too. You know, let's take it to the flow. We can get down and dirty too now. Like, understand these NFL teams don't give a damn about these players. They care about production. You know, you ever heard the UPS slogan, what, what can Brown do for you? What can these players do for you? And once they can't do that anymore, chunk up the deuce. So they don't care. Saints really need to go for Russell Wilson. I don't really trust Jameis to win playoff games and topple the Bucks empire. Uh, first off, the Bucks don't have an uh, empire. Uh, they won a Super Bowl. Uh, number two, I don't feel like this is time for desperation. You know, like some of y'all, some of y'all been at the crap table too long. You know what I'm saying? Like some of y'all act like y'all been at the crap table too long. Damn, all my money gone. Do, do y'all take watches? Uh, yeah. Can y'all take these earrings? Uh, look, I got a, I got the deed to my house. That's how y'all looking right now, man. Y'all looking like David Ruffin going to the crack house and throwing the, 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 the and throwing the, uh, the drug dealer the keys to Lincoln. That's how y'all looking right now. Brand new Lincoln outside. That's how y'all looking. Y'all looking desperate, man. Y'all looking ashy right now. Put some lotion on. You know what I'm saying? Your knuckles ashy. You know what I'm saying? Your face dry. Put some lotion on. Moisturize yourself. Have some respect. Have some dignity. <laughs> man, it's not that bad, bro. It's not, man. Like, seriously, it's not that bad. Man, we're about to wrap it up, man. It's been fun. It's been a fun show. I hope everybody had as much fun as I did. Uh... Let me see. I also noticed a lot of those Bucks fans that were all up in here after the Super Bowl are gone. I guess they're high wore off. Well, just cut the season over. You know, you got to do it again, man. Got to do it again. I think Jameis can do it. Uh, he won't be in the area system forcing passes, and he got to sit behind number nine. He can add the arm strength. Breeze couldn't, similar to prime Breeze. Not saying he will be as good. Yeah, I think he can do enough. Uh, it's once again, man, we, we are suffering from the coming to America syndrome, right? You know what I'm saying? Like we're, we're judging the sequel on the original and it's not fair. We are judging Jameis Winston on Drew Brees' success, which is not fair because you have to understand, you know, Drew Brees is a timeless classic here. Drew Brees is an all time great quarterback. Anybody else that comes in after him, if you're judging him based on Drew Brees' success, it's not fair. It's not. It is not fair. And you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't do that, folks. Mm -mm. I, I won't allow you to do that. You know, Jameis Winston has a certain skill set. Drew Brees has a certain skill set. You have to understand that there are going to be some growing pains, no matter if it's Jameis. Uh, no matter who it is, you're going to have some growing pains. Read a few more and then I'm going to get up out of here. Uh, TJ, why you don't want Russell Wilson? I, I didn't say I didn't want Russell Wilson. You know, I, I never say a day. I love Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson is, I say, one of my favorite quarterbacks in the National Football League. If they can get them, great. Like I said, I, I don't want them to sacrifice everything. To get them. 
because he'll be in the same predicament he was in in Seattle. No offensive line, you know, like struggling, you know what I'm saying, because the offensive line getting ran through. You know, like you don't want to leave one situation and go to the same situation that's identical because the team did everything they can, you know, to get you. So if they can get them, you know, well within their means, then fine. In the game of the week are Outlast 1 and 2 Resident Evil 8. Resident Evil 8 is dropping next month on the 12th. I can double check on the dates and Outlast trials. Uh, So, okay. Y'all check it out, man. Resident Evil 8 uh, coming out. That's from Ramsey. Ramsey, uh, off every single week, uh, he puts the game of the week on there. So, if you're a gamer, check it out. Not desperate, just want the Saints to actually compete with the Bucks to the level they steamrolled them 38 to 3. So, I mean, I think they can. I don't think they won't. I don't look at no other team. I don't, I don't look at what the, I don't see what the Bucks are doing. You know what I'm saying? I, I always felt like, you know, the Bucks built their team to beat the Saints and the Saints built their team to beat everybody in the NFC South. You know what I'm saying? And then that, that's just what it is. You know what I'm saying? They they build around the South. So I think that they'll do that. Uh, Bucks don't deserve the South. We need to take it back. Well, they got to win some games. Getting Russell will set us back just like Drew's contract a few years ago. Why give up our future for 79 or 97 seasons? It's a good point. And if, if you know, that's the case, they can he can stay there. But thank you all so much for checking out the State of the Saints podcast. Uh, this has been fun. Um, appreciate everybody for stopping by. Uh, be sure to subscribe and hit the like button. And also, uh, if you haven't, like I said, subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com. Search the State of the Saints podcast. Also on Facebook, facebook.com. Search the State of the Saints podcast. Previous episodes available on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor FM. And uh, thank you all so much for your time. Hope everybody has a good and productive day. This has been the State of the Saints podcast sponsored by Manscaped.com. Check out Manscaped.com for all of your your grooming needs, okay? Check them out, Manscaped.com. Use the promo code State of Saints. Save 20%. Till next time, all I got to say is, who that? <laughs>